Um, say hi to the internet and tell them who you are. Hi internet, I'm Paul Sidorian from Paul.com. And we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff today. Sure. Yeah, okay. So this is actually wireless, um, two different kinds, right? So it does 3G and 4G cellular wireless Okay. Um, to connect out to get internet access. And then it has wireless um, uh, regular Wi-Fi on the uh, board as well. And that's what connects to your laptop or even your phone to give you internet access. But what a lot of people don't do, I mean, some common thing in wireless security yeah. is they don't change any of the default passwords. And isn't it 0000? Zero, 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 zero? So some of them it's 000, zero, zero. some of it it's based on the hardware inside the the chip so it's based on the MAC address which is the hardware address on the uh, device itself because every device has a different MAC address yeah, it's unique yeah and that way you can track what hardware is going where everywhere and I can online. see it wherever I'm in proximity to this device I can see what hardware address you are and now from that I can determine with some other values I can determine the key okay um, and, and get it or determine your password so the passwords like written on the back of it but it's derived from some algorithm okay so and also what a lot of people won't do with a device like this especially is put encryption on it or hide your SSID. So, I mean, hiding your SSID is kind of like, you know, security through obscurity. You know, even though it's not being broadcast, people can still see it. So okay. they can passively sniff the network and, and see what your network name is. But it will just take that one more step to make it a little bit harder. Yeah, so what it means is when users bring up their uh, computer and it shows them all a list of available wireless networks, appear. you won't be in there. But someone with very low level of skill can sniff the network and see your SSID okay. um, on the network. But I still hide it when I travel like this because I just don't even want it to show up in people's lists because I don't even give the average user the knowledge that my network name is there. Right. Um, and then the other thing I do is I encrypt it. Um, so you, you had WPA in your list. Um, that's a, a pretty good form of encryption. Um, so there was like the old one, like WEP. Which is really easy to crack, right? Yeah, that's like you're not even locking your car like, doors kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's like someone with a Slim Jim can walk up or just break <laughs> your window. Like, it's ridiculously easy. WPA is a lot more secure. Okay. Um, but the key with WPA is to choose a password that is not easily guessable. Right. So what attackers have done is with uh, WPA is created a whole dictionary of like common passwords or even the whole English dictionary. Yep. And they've encrypted it. So then they can take um, the encrypted form of your password from the air. Okay. Okay. Then they have a whole bunch of passwords, like millions of passwords already encrypted, and they just compare it to each other. And they look and they look yeah. and they look so and they, they look. So they don't need to decrypt your password. They're just comparing it to oh. previously. So they spent like days and days and days encrypting whole dictionaries worth of passwords. So they've got the encrypted form of it and they're just comparing it. Okay. And that's why you should never use words in your password yeah, because I mean, it gives them an entire other tool to crack yours. So for the a lot of the keys, what I'll do is I'll just generate like 16 random characters and yep. numbers. Just a, a random. I mean, there are websites that will generate like a random password for you or, you know, if you just like mash your elbows on the keyboard, <laughs> whatever your approach is, is better than a dictionary word. You know, if you take like sentences and string them together, now you have to be careful because a lot of these devices I've noticed, um, ever since I wrote the book actually, that the length of your password will vary. So your computer will say, you can put a 32 character password in as your wireless password. Okay. But your device will say, you can only put a 16 character password in. In which and case now that, you have to do 16. They'll never match unless you, yeah, unless you bring it back. And, um, uh, so they both have 16. So sometimes you have to kind of play around with the longest password that you can have. But it's well worth the time. I mean, especially if you're at a conference or you know, traveling in airports. I mean, there's always hackers in airports, <laughs> you know, so because it, you know, a lot of hackers Hackers will uh, do fun things in the lab with wireless and say, oh, I can attack people this way and that way. Mm -hmm. They go to an airport, now there's this huge landscape of people to attack. So, Oh, really? They know, use airports as testing grounds? Absolutely. absolutely. Interesting. Our friend uh, Bob, so on the show when we, we talk about um, like things that Bob did or things that might get someone in trouble, it's always in the third person through our friend Bob. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> That's why your eyes did that. Yes, yes. So Bob uh, is in airports a lot yeah. across the world. All right, Bob. Testing his wireless <laughs> security. So. Okay. That's just a little bit about wireless. I mean, it's the same thing in your home, right? I mean, you want to apply the same things we talked about inside your home. Yep. Um, the kind of the missing piece of the puzzle at home is okay. So you have a wireless router at home. You put security on it, as we talked about, using strong passwords. You That's maybe you hide your SSID. Okay. Um, 
But the thing is, your router runs an operating system. Like we have Windows and Linux and OS X. It runs the same kind of operating system. In fact, a lot of them run Linux. Okay. And operating systems will have bugs or holes, mistakes that the programmer made that could allow someone to compromise that device. Okay. So what someone will do is make another piece of software called a patch to fix that bug. What a lot of people don't do is apply those to their devices. So they'll go to the store, and, and this, is, this is important, I'll, I'll explain how this all plays in. When you go to the store, which wireless router do you choose? Usually people choose Linksys, that's the most popular one, It's right? the most popular one, but what else is the driving factor behind which router you would choose? The price? Yes, the price, oh, right? Okay. You want the cheapest one. I mean, in a basic sense, they're all doing the exact same thing, right? So you're going to choose the cheapest one. So what that does is causes manufacturers to make the cheapest router. And the first thing that manufacturers get rid of when they want to make the cheapest router is security. Because really? it costs money. It costs time to make sure that your code is really secure, make sure your hardware is really secure. It may cost money to build a, mach uh, a device that's a little more powerful, you know, with respects to computing resources, to implement things like encryption or other security measures to make it hard for people to break in. Right. So what we've done is we've developed this culture for people to make really cheap, insecure routers. And that's what we have out there today. Oh, we can talk a little about social engineering. I'd love that. Yeah, kind of the fun ones that's going around right now is you get a call from someone that is saying they're from Microsoft. They say, hey, you know, we, we know you're running Microsoft Windows. Um, we're just calling you to have you run this update. Can you go to this website and download and install the software? <laughs> As if Microsoft would call you personally. Exactly. But a lot of people are falling for it, right? So, I mean, it's just kind of an example of social engineering. Um, so as part of Paul.com, we do a lot of testing of organizations. We do a lot of social engineering. Really? And it's amazingly easy to get people to click on a link. I mean, we have it almost like 100% success rate. Come on. Yeah. I, so oh my gosh. The latest test that we're doing is kind of interesting. It's kind of more like we're conducting a social experiment for the client. Like this. So they want to know how many people in our organization would click on a link. And I'm like, well, I mean, we could get a higher percentage, but you know, let's focus on the people who are really easy to get. Let's build a message, send it to everyone, and at the very bottom say, this message is being sent as part of a penetration test that's been sanctioned by the IT department. You know, do not click the link above, and people don't even get there. We'll have like a 30 or 40% success rate with a message like that. Really? Yeah, and that really speaks to the end user awareness training in the, in the organization. <laughs> if we are hired to send a message to all the users and we tell people oh. at the bottom, don't, don't click do the it. link, and they still click the link. And still 40% yeah. click through rate. Yeah. It was pretty funny, some of the reactions. <laughs> I mean, in, in doing engagements like that, you know, I'll sometimes pretend to be like a student and I'm interested in, you know, um, sending them some of my research for review. And that kind of triggers a social response of, oh, wow, this person thinks I'm important enough to, like, want them to review my research. Oh. And I will research that person at the company to know what they do in the area and the topics. And I'll say, I really want you to open my research. Can I send you a PDF document? And, of course, inside the PDF document is an exploit. Yep. So one time I was doing it, I said it to the woman. She's like, oh, I couldn't open the document. <laughs> and I didn't. Uh, see that my exploit works. I'm like, oh. So let me change it a little bit. I said, oh, there must have been some kind of problem with the document. Can you try this one? A and that went on like three or four times until she successfully helped me get my exploit working. <laughs> so she actually aided me in exploiting her own computer. <laughs> uh, they're so trusting. Yeah. 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 It, 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 you know, you have to put context around the messages you received. And sometimes it's hard because we as the attackers will pride provide the context for you, right? Yep. So we research someone in the company and say, hey, this person likes collecting coins, you know? So we'll set up a fake website with the coin collecting. And this actually comes from the guys who wrote the social engineering uh, book that are, that are here at DEF CON. It's a great book. And I think it's a great example. And they set up a coin website and they actually called him and said, hey, I noticed you were on this forum about collecting coins. I've got these coins for sale. I'm going to send you an email. So that's a pretext, right? Yeah. Now the user is expecting to get an email. Now they're going to be excited about opening the link. And they go to the website and of course it contains exploits that compromise their computer, um, but that's the kind of social engineering um, that's happening. But the guy doesn't realize how they got his number in the first place because I'm sure he didn't post it on the forum. 
Yeah, that's one thing the user's not he's realizing. He's not thinking. He's yeah, just yeah. getting so excited about, they want my opinion? Right. Yeah, I'm special? Exactly. Press exactly. Click. Or I'm going to get a deal on these coins, you know, I'm going to win an iPad. <laughs> well, the, the fun thing that people are doing with iPads now, you know, because everyone's giving away iPads, and when you get hired for a penetration test, you have a certain budget to work in. So what we figured out is, well, why not buy an iPad, put evil stuff on it, and then set it up so the employee has some context around it. Maybe they just uh, attended a conference and you go, oh, you attended this conference and we got your card and you won this iPad. And they're like, oh, I did attend that conference when really, you know, we can find that information online somewhere. And we send them an iPad and what's the first thing people do when they, they get an iPad? Jam it into their computer. Yeah, or they open it up and they turn the wireless on and they connect to the corporate wireless. But really, oh, we are controlling the iPad and now we have access to the corporate wireless. Oh, yeah. I love that. So It's a bit dirty, but... I like it. Yeah, and you don't usually get your iPad back after that, but you know, you just kind of build that into the cost. <laughs> <laughs> so beware of free iPads, I guess. <laughs> beware of free iPads. <laughs> oh, that's good. This has been really fun. Yes, it has. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, any last words of wisdom? Uh, you can visit our website, paul.com, .com, yep. all spelled out. And uh, we've got all kinds of fun videos and blogs and uh, in multiple different languages, uh, Spanish as well. We just started you Spanish. You different languages? Yeah, we, oh, have, that's we have two guys on Paul.com that, uh, that speak Spanish. So oh, cool. One of them sets up the interviews and Carlos uh, does the interviews with, with people. So okay. it's a lot of fun. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Say goodbye to the internet. Bye-bye. <laughs>